We are following the breaking news here this morning. The Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing into the water there. Stay with Fox 45. We have exclusive coverage all morning long. You can see our live cameras out there. We've got two live reporters, a producer live on the scene here. Many cameras around that stretch as we bring you the latest in what is now an active search and rescue mission. This morning in a city in crisis, we're taking a closer look at the claims from Baltimore City Mayor Brandon Scott that he made during his city, State of the City address yesterday. Some of the things he focused on, city services, youth engagement, public safety. The mayor pointing to his group violence reduction strategy as the driving force behind the drop in homicides and shootings. With the city regularly seeing more than 300 Baltimoreans killed every year, something had to give. So we got to work outlining and then implementing Baltimore's first ever comprehensive violence prevention plan. Mayor Scott says the number of carjackings in Baltimore City is down, but the number of car thefts is still skyrocketing. More than 1,600 cars have been stolen in Baltimore City so far this year. That's 59% more than this time last year. Political analyst John Deedy calling it a political move. This is about seven weeks till the primary. You're focusing on the positive. You don't bring up, by the way, here's all the bad things going on. You focus on the positive. Here's the good things that are happening. These are the places where it's going down. You don't talk about, here's where crime problems have increased or where our problems are. Our breaking news here this morning. Take a good look at your screen. This is the moment the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed into the water just hours ago, around 1.30 this morning. We are getting reports that at least seven people and several vehicles have fallen into the water here. We have exclusive live team coverage for you all morning long. Crews on the scene as we speak here at this early hour. Live from WBFF in Baltimore, this is Fox 45 Early Edition. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for waking up with us on this Tuesday, March 26th. I'm Megan Gillen. And Taylor Stewart. We've got a lot to talk about this morning, Megan. Incredible footage coming into our newsroom here from that area around the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The breaking news here this morning. Fox 45 News first to the scene as an ambulance, police truck, and fire truck arrived there to respond to that emergency situation there here this morning. That's right. Now, as we mentioned, we have live team coverage this morning on the breaking news of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing. We're bringing you the very latest information all morning long right now. Let's go live to the scene with Olivia Dance. Olivia, what are you seeing at this point? Lots of emergency vehicles behind you. Yeah, Taylor, I mean, that's that's pretty much what we're seeing. We're seeing emergency vehicle after emergency vehicle, um, all sorts of jurisdictions, PG County, Howard County, Harford, Baltimore County, of course, and Baltimore City. Those are just some to name a few. And um, we've seen special operations crews, rescue crews, and they're going speeding up through this road closure here. This is Fort Armistead Road. The key bridge is just about a mile up this way. Uh, you can probably hear another siren right now. So really, it's just a constant flow of sirens and emergency vehicles speeding up on Fort Armistead said road uh, coming from going to the bridge or coming from the bridge and we're also seeing some people that are just coming down here to see what is going on uh, i have mike right here you live just down the road from here mike yes, right correct okay so when did you first hear about the the key bridge collapse uh, and first thoughts i mean i i have a neighbor who lives across the street from me who was trying to call me who works over at amazon and was trying to tell me probably about an hour ago at this point and i was in disbelief i i couldn't believe it it was happening um, I thought I was in a dream, really. Um, never in a million years where I think the key bridge would go down like it did. I mean, I, I travel that road quite often. I have family to live um, over yeah. in Dundalk and everything. So, I mean, it's a major artery in this area. And with the debris, I can't, I can't imagine what it will do to the port. I'm assuming you've seen some of the videos going around as well. A lot of people telling me that when they first saw it, they thought it was fake. Kind of the same thing you're saying. You just couldn't believe it. What was going through your head when you first saw those? I, 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 I just was in shock when, yeah. I, when I saw the the video uh, this morning after uh, my neighbor called me. I mean, it was like like you said, unbelievable. I mean, in shock really. I yeah, mean, it, it, it's it's like. 
is this a movie? Right, right. Um, and whatnot. I mean, it's like I say, it's a major artery, and it's it's really going to affect not only traffic but the port. I I would expect um, getting you, cargo in and everything. Have you heard anything from your family that's uh, a little bit closer? Um, no, no, they're probably all still asleep at this hour. Uh, right. My brother has two kids, so they have school today, so they're probably just getting uh, okay. um, maybe getting up now. I told him to give me right. a call once he. He gets up and everything, but I mean, with the Easter holiday coming up too, I mean, we're go we were supposed to have Easter over there, and now um, we're going to have to find alternative routes to his house, which is fine. I know the area pretty right. well, but I mean, this is just shock, very, very shocking what's going on. So shocking, of course, right now, um, really the, the rescue operation is, is the main thing. So thank you so much for speaking with us. We're going to pan the camera over here. That's Howard County Fire and Rescue. Uh, we see some, they're special operations, so we see several boats, water rescue. So really, uh, Megan and Taylor, the main thing right now is this rescue operation. At least seven people were told they are trying to rescue. So uh, I've also seen uh, a couple families here, and it is just tragic um, as they are waiting to hear anything from loved ones that they believe were on the key bridge when, when it collapsed. So we'll bring you updates as we get them, but really right now the focus is on that rescue, and we're just seeing a lot of first responders. Certainly, crews from, from all jurisdictions there. Olivia, thank you. I think so many sharing that, that man's sentiments there of just a shock to see something that's been part of the Baltimore landscape for so long just, uh, just gone. I want to check in now live with Shannon Lilly. She's on the other side of the bridge or in the Dundalk area. Shannon, a little quieter where you are right now. Have you seen anyone kind of trying to, to walk up and see what's going on? So we see a lot of media out here, Megan. They're all trickling in, and, and we do expect to get more information in a press conference. We don't know when that will happen yet, but of course, we'll bring you that information when we get it. We do know it's supposed to happen this morning. And as you can imagine, authorities just like us were waking up from their beds to these phone calls. Just stunning news and unlike anything that we have seen here in Baltimore. Even when we arrived here, an employee with the MDTA telling me that there's not much to see because there's not much left to see. But looking here behind me, this is the ramp that led up to what once was the Francis Scott Key Bridge. This is this is the Baltimore Beltway. This is the inner loop. This is a major way that people commute here in the city, and it is just gone. It is truly unfathomable. So to give you some perspective here, though, you can see those those red flashing towers that were once on the right of the bridge. So if you if you typically took this bridge, you'd probably see them um, as you as you crossed it but again from what we're hearing that portion is is gone and it's still pretty dark and we do expect to get a better perspective as the sun comes up but we are learning that a massive container ship rammed into one of the supports uh, and several vehicles fell into the water below. We know that there is an active uh, search and rescue mission going on right now as um, at least seven people are trying to be rescued. Uh, and if you've seen the video that's circulating on, on social media, I mean, it's just something out of a movie. We know that this bridge it was opened in 1977, so it has been standing for a long time. And uh, the only silver lining here, guys, is just with how many cars typically cross this bridge during the busy rush hour that this did happen overnight. I mean, thankfully, that is the case. But still so many questions here. How did this happen? How many are injured? Of course, we do hope to learn that information this morning. And as soon as we get it, we'll bring it to you. Megan and Taylor, back to you. That's a great point, Shannon. I mean, every morning around this time where we're taking a look at traffic backed up on the key bridge, so often, you know, people people trying to use that that portal there. We've got some incredible images coming into our newsroom here this morning. This just one of them. The the images, the moment that the bridge was hit and fell into the water there below. A lot of tweets coming in here to our newsroom this morning. Another one showing a different angle of that. You see the, the cargo ship right there. So on the left-hand side, you see that dark image coming into the, the pillar on the left, and then at that moment of impact, just that bridge collapsing to the water below. Uh, again, Mayor Brandon Scott writing this, saying, I'm aware of and en route to the incident at the Key Bridge. I've been in contact with the, the fire chief, the governor, the executives there from Baltimore County to Anne Arundel County 
many emergency personnel as we have seen or on the scene and efforts are underway. That's from Mayor Brandon Scott there. One more for you. Baltimore County Executive Johnny Olszewski also saying he's aware of the situation at the Key Bridge and remain in regular communication with my fire chief and director of emergency operations. I'm also in contact with the mayor of Baltimore and Anne Arundel County Executive. Rescue efforts are underway. Please pray for those impacted. That bridge there spanning, you know, really impacting Baltimore City residents, right. Baltimore County residents, and as we saw in Arundel County as well. So it is the uh, major connector. A highly traveled route at this point, uh, which is obviously going to impact many today. That's right. Now, if you usually take the Key Bridge, you'll need to find a new route this morning. The Baltimore Harbor Tunnel or the Fort McHenry Tunnel will be the alternate ways you can use to get across the Patapsco River this morning. But be mindful, more people than usual will likely be on these routes. Well, the 695 Francis Scott Key Bridge, as uh, we've been mentioning here, this is the bridge that spanned over the Patapsco River. It was 1.6 miles long, and it's really been a, a part of the, the, the landscape for so long. Construction began in 1972. The bridge opened in March of 1977. Scholars believe that the span crosses within 100 yards of the site where we all have heard the story. Francis Scott Key witnessing the bombardment of Fort McHenry on the evening of September 12th, 1814. That battle inspiring Key to write the words of the Star Spangled Banner. And because of that, the bridge named after him in that, in that very spot where all of that happened. All right, let's take a look at our traffic now. Len Stoller Traffic Network here. Obviously an incident to, to report here, US 40 at Burke Avenue. We know one vehicle involved all eastbound lanes and shoulders are closed right now. Cameras not showing that incident at this time, but uh, the major issue obviously being the, the bridge here this morning. I do want to bring up my computer just very quickly here. Obviously the, the major backups on the Francis Scott Key Bridge. We mentioned the tunnels as an alternate route. As we take a look at the Baltimore area here, guys, those tunnels looking great. So if you're getting up and heading out right now, we're expecting more traffic uh, later today, but right now would be a great time to, to hit those spots. All right, let's go ahead and get a look at your forecast here for this Tuesday. Meteorologist Justin Chambers. Yeah, and ladies, I just uh, found out actually they put a temporary flight restriction over where the bridge is. So because I'm a pilot, I looked at that and I saw that it is uh, from the surface up to 2,000 feet. Obviously, they don't want people who maybe have planes that want to get up or a helicopter want to go up and look at that because I'm, obviously they're going to be search and rescue helicopters, probably a news helicopter. I don't know if our news helicopter from WJLA is going to be up. I'm hearing it is, but again, we do have that temporary flight restriction that's right over the bridge. They call it a flight hazard. This is what they do when they have the uh, wildfires, like we had the wildfires in Virginia over the last couple of days in West Virginia as well. They put those flight hazards up. So that's something else that I just uh, thought might be, you know, just add to the story here about what's going on. Our Towson camera right now, everything is nice and quiet at this time. And our temperatures, well, they're in the 30s. It's not as cold as it was yesterday. 33 in Cockeysville, 36 in Baltimore, right about 40 in Annapolis at this time. So a cloudy and cool morning. We will be mostly cloudy this afternoon and we are tracking our next weather maker. That's going to be the rain that's going to come in not only tomorrow, but into Thursday as well. So if you are driving this morning, heading out, our temperatures are mainly going to be in the mid to upper 30s. Dry today, but the rain rolls in starting tomorrow. So we'll take a closer look at what we can expect with that as well as our opening day forecast and see what's going on as we head toward the weekend all coming up in just a few. Well, we're back out here live from the Key Bridge as we continue to follow that collapse. Stick with Fox 45 Morning News all morning long as we bring you updates and exclusive coverage here on air and online. We'll be right back. We have live team coverage throughout this morning on the breaking news overnight of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing. We're bringing you the very latest information throughout the morning. And right now, I'm going to go back out live to the scene with Olivia Dance. Olivia, you've talked to quite a few people this morning. You've seen quite a few emergency vehicles. What's going on right now? Yeah, Taylor, really the same thing, just seeing a lot of emergency vehicles from all different jurisdictions. And we've been talking to a lot of people, too, but right now I actually want to bring in Donald Heinbuck. He is the former chief of operations for Baltimore City Fire. You're also a resident. You live just right around the corner from here. We're off of Fort Armistead Road. So for some perspective, that's just about a mile away from the Key yeah. Bridge. Yeah. Um, you actually heard the collapse this morning. Yeah, I, I live in a community called Sunny Beach, which is the first community going south from the bridge. And uh, we were awakened with uh, what appeared to be an earthquake and a, lo a long rolling uh, sound of thunder. Wow. So uh, 
we woke up and literally we can look right out of our bedroom window and see the key bridge. But I couldn't see anything because of the darkness. And a little bit later, I got up again to check and I saw some emergency lights in the area and I decided to drive up because I'm the old uh, dog you know, chasing the fire truck. And I uh, came up here and what was in progress was a, a multi-jurisdictional response to uh, a disaster, basically. And, and obviously you know all about that. Um, this used to be what you, what you did. Um, based off what you're seeing, I mean, we, we've seen pretty much every county here. Is that is that standard for something this serious? Yeah, yes, and it goes through the training that these jurisdictions do uh, with the dive teams and fire and and all the rescue uh, assets that uh, come to the table. And so the communications was going very well. I was listening to at the command post and it just seemed like a, a very well organized and uh, uh, incident command play, put in place and a good operation. And if anything can be done, they're gonna do it. Obviously, the main focus now is is the rescue mission. Right. Um, right. Tell us just a little bit about how this process is going to work. Obviously, that's the main focus, and then where, where do we go from there? Well, a command structure has been established, and as the units come in, they're assigned like talk groups, and they're given uh, basic assignments, and accountability is put in place so we know where everyone is for safety purposes. So when I commanded incidents like this, I wanted to go like a training incident. And that's what I saw back here this morning, yeah. like a, a training incident. All the uh, people know what to do. They had their equipment ready to go and that's what's happening. And just one, one more thing, you know, uh, just from a resident perspective, I mean, you thought this was an earthquake. Obviously you later found out it was not an earthquake. Um, first thoughts when you, when you saw videos on social media and heard that the key bridge actually collapsed from a ship hitting it. Uh, my first indication of a collapse was a radio transmission from one of the fire trucks. And, you know, you kind of that's a, take take hold. What What yeah. is going on? And, and, you know, I've been around and studied uh, bridge collapses and it can be, as it is here, catastrophic. So, um, it's one of the incidents that we, we train for and hope we never have to encounter, but that's what's going on right now. So, Did it, did it actually feel like an earthquake? Like, did your house shake the house at all? Shook. Yeah, that's wow. where my, my wife said, what, what, the, the house just shook. I said, yeah, something's going on. Yeah. And like I said, I, I looked that back and you really couldn't see anything in the water at that point in time. But later on, couldn't get back to sleep. I took a look and I saw some emergency vehicle lights on the other side, on the Dundalk side. Mm -hmm. Like I said, one side's Baltimore County, right. this side is Baltimore City, and the Anne Arundel County line is right behind us. Right. So they all work together. Yeah, and we've been seeing that multi-unit uh, response, multi-jurisdiction response. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for that perspective. Okay. Donald, it was nice meeting you, and uh, we'll send it back to you guys. All right, Olivia, thank you for, for those interviews. Keep us updated out there. We're going to take another live look over the Francis Scott Key Bridge that collapsed into the Patapsco River early this morning. You're looking right now at what would be the bridge. It is in the water as they continue to search for vehicles and people. We'll be right back with the latest updates. All right, this morning we're continuing to follow that breaking news of the key bridge collapsing into the Patapsco River early this morning. Take a look at this video you can see here on the left of your screen of a cargo ship crashing into the base of the bridge. That is what caused it to fall into the water. It's just unbelievable. Every time we take a look at that video, hard to believe that happened just hours ago. I want to take you live to what is left of the Francis mm. Scott Key Bridge right now. It's still dark before the sun comes up, but this is our harbor camera zooming in. I, normally, this would be illuminated by the lights from the bridge there. Most of that is now in the water. We've actually got a chopper shot from our Sinclair sister station in D.C., WJLA, now above. Again, uh, this is the aerial footage looking down. Uh, you can see the road leading up to it. Once the sun comes up, this is going to give a, a further indication of just what is not there. Is that the ship, Justin? Yeah, I think that's the ship. Yeah, I think that's the ship because it looks like it has all the cargo containers on it. Oh, good eyes. Yeah.